Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. What the hell is this lazy bastard doing sitting under a tree while being attacked by two giant floating pulsating keys? Thankfully, they're not moving closer right now. They appear to be biding their time, simply watching, waiting for the time to strike. It's a possibility, or it could be a puzzle game by the name of The Bridge. Created by Ty Taylor and Mario Castaneda. Published by the Quantum Astrophysicists Guild, which I'm fairly sure is just made up. Yeah, that's not a real company. If I go and find that that's a real company, I'll be very surprised, somewhat impressed, but nonetheless pretty damn surprised. So what is the bridge? Well, according to Steam, because Steam's genres are terrible, it is strategy, indie, and casual. I assume this is the case because I don't think they actually have a puzzle genre. Why? I have no idea. But let's have a look at it anyway. So as you can see, it's somewhat artsy. We press escape and you'll notice that you cannot control the menus with the mouse. Thankfully the game doesn't really have many menus to speak of. Now, as I recall correctly, this game recommends a controller. Using a controller is recommended. Press T to toggle left-handed mode, and otherwise you have the ability to use the keys right there. So, if you don't have a controller, that might kind of suck for you. I have my controller plugged in. I'm going to try the keys first. If I struggle with that, then I will switch over to the actual controller itself. So A and D, rotate, gravity, open door, invert, and backtrack. That's pretty much all you do. All right, so wake up the lazy bastard to begin with by... It's... You see, I have godlike powers. You know, he wasn't awoken by the seismic activity beneath him. No, it was the apple that came down on his head. All right. Time to get a moving. I have this puzzly indie vibe going on right here. Oh, hey, look. It is a indie game with a fairly unique graphic style. We haven't seen that before. You know what I haven't seen before, though? Look at this. This is kind of neat. So I can tilt the world kind of backwards and forwards to some degree. Now, <coughs> this is walking up a hill, walking up a hill. Regular. Okay. What about if I make the hill steeper? Look at that. That's an interesting amount of detail. I don't generally see that in a lot of games. The fact that he's actually struggling a bit harder in order to walk, that's kind of crazy. Okay. Well, we'll see how it goes. Make it a little bit easier on the fellow. He is old and lazy after all. I might, did I just go around in circles? I very well might have. Interesting. We could shake it and get some more apples down, I guess. There we go. Why not? What is the purpose of this? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing it anyway. Maybe the tree will get angry and try and attack me. See, it's got two little eyes. It's looking a little bit aggressive. One of its eyes just fell out there. And there we go. So I've made all the apples fall down from the tree. Was there any purpose to it? Bollocks if I know. I guess I'll just keep walking. <laughs> Is this really going to be one of those games where I can't even get past the starting area because I have no idea what the game's actually asking me for? It wouldn't surprise me. I am going round in circles right here, so... Well, this is, that's the only thing that the game actually told me to do. So let's head on back to the controls and see if there's any clues there. Rotate gravity, open door, invert. Doesn't do anything. This is left and right. This, yeah, that's it. Okay, let's walk back the other way then. If this is going to end up being the entire thing... <sighs> already, it's taking the mick. It's like, that wasn't there previously. We'll tilt gravity ever so slightly so he doesn't slip down the hill. Oh no, I'm having to walk at a 30 degree angle. Truly, this is beyond my capabilities. I, th I think I'm ruining the art experience here for you, by the way. This is his house. It's not a very good house. It's kind of it's kind of wrecked by the looks of it. W to open the door. We can have a look around the house. There doesn't appear to be anything here as of yet. And this is chapter one. All right, fair enough then. I like the way that it draws you in there. It's very, it's the graphic style I would describe as kind of charcoal pencil, which is unique. That's not something I usually see. I just, I just like the fact that I can go backwards and forwards and rock this guy ever so slightly. Well, let's see what's going on with it. So according to the features of the game, it contains 48 thought-provoking puzzles, each unique from the rest, all requiring an innovative solution. This probably means I'm going to get absolutely and totally confused immediately. It also claims to have MC Escher-esque worlds with impossible architecture. 
Set in the style of a beautifully hand-drawn black and white lithograph. Alright, so in this case, I can actually rotate the whole thing around. So, you know, it's not too difficult a concept here. I wonder if this guy's actually just gonna horribly die if I make him drop too far. I guess not. He seems entirely capable of it. Now, you'll notice the way that the world actually works here. Simple rotation allows me to get to where I need to go because, of course, some of... Some of this stuff's in 2D, so you can go up that side and so on and so forth, even though it looks like you can't. But you know, that, that was easy enough, so there's the first puzzle done. Now, after you've beaten the game, it does have an alternate version, which changes 24 of the main puzzles and puts in an alternate ending, which is quite nice. So... I think that, you know, the first kind of massive concern that I ever have with games like this, especially when it lists 48 puzzles, like, hmm, well, this is a $15 game, or £10, or 13 or 14 euros, depending on where you happen to be. So, you would think... Oh, that, that says slide, okay. So, we can slide it down there. I assume you can probably slide the book to the side. I would think that would make sense. So, if I slide that in this direction, that's going to slide there, then I'm going to rotate that, and... I'm not really having too many problems with this so far. Admittedly, it is... Yeah, we're going to rotate this the other way around so I can actually get past. It, this kind of puzzle actually kind of makes sense to me. It's not something that I really struggle with. But that will probably change pretty quickly. So then I'm going to walk down here, and then I'm going to slide this around the other way. I can't do that just yet. I'm going to have to get to the other side. And then that gives me access. Soundtrack is fairly minimalistic, as is just the general design of the game. You're going to find a lot of games like this that are developed by indie devs because art style is one of the big things you can do to distinguish your game from everybody else. Uh, you're going to build a game around a basic principle. Some might call it a gimmick, others would just call it a mechanical fulcrum. That's probably just me that calls it a mechanical fulcrum. But the idea is that things rotate around a fulcrum, right? This game revolves and rotates are quite literally around a mechanical fulcrum and that idea is that you can shift the gravity you basically turn the world around and that allows you to gain access to certain things so the question is where do we want to go well i what okay apparently that kills you right so that's definitely something to watch out for, which is, of course, why I'm going to touch it again. Now, you'll notice that if you hold down space, you get a backtrack, which prevents you from dying to such things. Now, I'd imagine this thing is going to roll when I try and rotate around, so this is not going to be quite as easy as it first appears. Just the... God, it's like a giant malevolent baby that's trying to kill me. So maybe I can... I mean, I can maybe still make this work. We'll see. It depends how forgiving this is really going to be to me. Let's rotate that in this direction. I've just got to be really, really careful about where that ball actually goes. Can I? Nope. <laughs> I'm just kind of rewinding it to make sure that this doesn't go horribly wrong. Hmm. The first problem ensues. Although I would imagine you can probably just... Hand dead. <laughs> Just, again. There we go. This is a little trickier. I and mean, I can see what, clearly what I need to do, and that's roll the giant malevolent Babo all the way over to the other side. The question is, how do I do that without dying? Well, maybe I just have to rotate it all the way around. It's interesting how that blurs there, and then I can kind of knock it down here. And then, can I, if I rotate it back, it's going to put it back where it was in the first place. I think what I really want is to put it there. And then, maybe if I tilt this at the right angle, currently I appear to be stuck. There we go. I should just be able to drop down there and then walk. Oh, 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 oh come on, really? God, th this guy is really, really bad at s slight inclines. So, oh, my only weakness. That and whatever the hell that is. What kind of interests me is that like these these screens in between the two, I feel that the game art's actually better than those screens. It's just the way that the character looks looks uh, slightly less cool, slightly less detailed on those splash screens, which is very unusual, certainly. I think you know by now from watching my videos that this is not my type of game. And it's, it's very hard for me to assess it 
in anything more than a sort of the most cursory way. I, I, I'm a kind of I'm the kind of person that looks at mechanics a lot of the time. Yeah, I like mechanics. I understand mechanics fairly well. Interesting. So this is going to be a little pendulum puzzle here. All right. I understand mechanics pretty well. Mechanics are things that I can say, or you know, at least to some degree of objectivity, or at least I can properly explain my reasoning as to why a mechanic is good or not good. Yeah? Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? But when it comes to stuff like puzzle design, it's, it's much less easy for me to assess whether or not these are good puzzles. I mean, hell, usually if I can understand the puzzles, the chances are that the puzzles aren't very good because I'm really, really bad when it comes to puzzles. And I'm handling this reasonably easily. I mean, this is the kind of thing that I can figure out. This seems to just gel with my mind quite nicely, which is unusual for me when it comes to a puzzle game. But for a lot of other people, it's going to be very difficult for me to explain to them whether or not it's a good game that they would enjoy. And they've really got to just look at what they see here on the screen as I demonstrate it, apply their own set of principles and their own set of preferences relative to mine. And that's really the only way that you can do this. And honestly, oh god, it's like one of those little toys you got as a kid where you had to rotate everything and slide it around. Yeah, I could definitely see how this works. I used to be amazing at these as a kid. Let's see if I still am. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep rotating it so it slides the key around and I'll gain access. Anyway, this is the whole point of a channel like this, right? It's This is a... You can see this channel very much as a byline. And that... Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So, I should remember the fact that the architecture of this is a little unusual. I can't get there myself. That appears to be impossible. Anyway, the, the point of the videos that I make on this channel more, more often than not is that it's very much like old-style newspaper bylines. Yeah? And the idea is that you get to know the person that's writing it. Because you know, these, these videos are very much editorials all of the time. And as a direct result, you learn whether or not your preferences kind of match up with that person. If they don't, you... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see where it's going. You learn, relatively speaking, exactly how to assess games based on someone else's preferences. Like, if you know that I have a very specific reaction to certain things within first-person shooters that you either like or don't like, then it's very easy for you to judge whether or not my opinion is going to be useful to you. And it's very easy to judge whether or not you would like it based on what you know about my preferences. That's the point. That's that's what a byline is. And I don't like puzzle games. I don't get along with them very well. Most of the time I fail, although in this case I'm actually doing pretty well, which is shocking, I know. I'm going to run into something, no doubt, that doesn't really work out for me. But you can see the gameplay, and you can figure out, relative to my opinion, whether or not you personally would like it. I have a feeling this is way, way more complicated than it looks like in the first place. I mean, I guess I can kind of rotate it this way, but then... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can see how you do this. I think you just have to kind of go around the edge and hopefully not balk it up. And then you'd have to probably rotate it backwards. I, I think, it really, because you don't really have a lot of keys in this game, I have a feeling that this is the wrong thing to do. Actually, no, no, it's fine. Never mind. Anyway... It's, you don't have a lot of keys to really handle in this game. So there's really only so many solutions I suppose you can have with the whole rotating thing. And it may even be that some people find this game overly simplistic as a result. Ah, I should have rotated that quicker. That's only so quick it can go. If I, if I stand right over to the edge like that and then... I just, I kind of let it roll down into the corner. There we go. No, I think I'm gonna... No, I'm, I've just realized how stupid an idea that was. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna die to this thing regardless, so I'm gonna have to rewind. You know, I was saying earlier, and then suddenly I, I end up in a bit which I can't really handle. It's... It, just seems like there's probably not a lot of real solutions to bollocks, to all of these puzzles because 
it is a very simplistic style of game. And this may put some people off. This might not be what people are looking for. Aha, uh -huh. yes. No. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I hoped it was. <laughs> my, my plan was just to kind of slide off the side there directly onto it, but it seems like I ended up going the wrong way in the process. All right. No, no, dumbass. Try again. I don't think I can make this, can I? Doesn't look like it. Otherwise, I can't really rotate it too far because I'm just going to slip again. The question is, which side do I slip to? You get back. <laughs> you are not pulling that crap on me. That is not happening. Uh, I don't know, maybe I can make this. It doesn't seem likely, though. Ah! Why do I suddenly... I probably should stop the rotation, shouldn't I? Can I rotate the other way? Huh. No, I'm clearly overthinking this. <laughs> yeah, this is not going well. <laughs> it's like a demented version of Prince of Persia with all these bloody rewinds. Oh well. <laughs> this is probably going to be the part that I get stuck on. From a technical standpoint, the game works just fine without a controller. You don't need a controller at all. It's it's really odd that they should say it's recommended for a controller. It's you could there's only four buttons really aside from W and space, which is go through door slash invert, which apparently you can't do. I guess that's maybe the other mechanic is that you can invert at some point during the game directly, but that's not in the game yet. From what I can tell, this is not at this point within the actual levels. So now there's not really a huge amount to think about here. From a character standpoint, it's I've seen so many indie games with nice graphic styles or one way or the other. I, I almost feel bad because I feel like I should appreciate it way more than I do. And I kind of don't because I've just seen so many good indie games. Damn it. I was thinking maybe, maybe, just maybe I could make that, but... Yeah. No, I can't rotate fast enough. I'm going to have to kind of tip that away from here. I've seen so many indie games with really, really fantastic graphic styles that it's, it's so hard for me to be completely impressed by the notion of an indie game with a good graphic style. It's like, oh great, an indie game with a good graphic style. Yeah, that is... That's pretty ubiquitous. It's pretty common. And the reason it's pretty common, sadly, is because this is what a lot of indie games are doing to distinguish themselves, is to have this unique graphic style. And the question you've then got to ask is, well, what else? What else have you got? And unfortunately, more often than not, it isn't really a lot else. But some people appreciate these sort of single mechanic puzzle games. And you can definitely appreciate the artistic effort. And there's obviously, obviously a lot of thought and a lot of design that's going to this. It's just I personally don't find it all entertaining. But that's me. You know how I am. You, you are already aware of my preferences. This is not news to you. Absolutely not. You are well aware that I am not big into puzzle games. But if you find this interesting, then the PC version seems fine. You know, it'd be nice to have mouse control in the menus, but it gets, you'd really have no reason to actually be in the menus, so it doesn't matter. Art style wise, I like the aesthetic of it. Seems pretty cool. The whole MC Escher impossible dimensions thing is definitely something that to me works pretty well. Flattened by the solid ball again. I don't even, I don't even know. I, I am beyond, I, I can't figure this one out at all because I'm a moron, I assume. But one way or the other, it may be something that appeals to you. And if this is the kind of thing that it's like, oh, this would be a good way to while away a few hours. This looks pretty cerebral and nicely atmospheric. And you're probably right. You know, it's exactly that. Then by all means, give it a bash. What harm is there? It's available on Steam right now for $15, 12 pounds or 14 euros. It goes by the name of The Bridge. 
God, this, this was probably an obvious solution, but I'm not even thinking anymore. Anyway, there you go, folks. The Bridge, currently available on Steam. My name's been Total Biscuit, and I will see you next time.